what's up guys let's continue with section number two which is from chapter number four isothermal reactor design we are designing essentially reactors in this case we're going to talk about the batch reactor and hopefully you remember this methodology chart if you do not remember go one video uh, one previous video and I explain them so let me do it especially for the batch now of course you start with your problem you have your constant and you have your volumes maybe also initial amount of moles or concentration etc and you start doing your general mole balance, mole balance equation which is from chapter number one which is inlet minus outlet plus generation equals accumulation for the case of the batch you don't have these two you just have generation equals accumulation accumulation is a derivative of moles with respect of time and this here is rate times volume then of course you also have your design equations which they use conversion or x of a and in chapter 2 we remember we were given the rate of uh, reaction of A with respect of conversion so you went directly here and solved it but this is not the case we are going to actually see what happens when we do not have it when we do not have it we need to use these two things we saw in chapter number 3 which is the determination of the rate law in function or as a function of com uh, concentration and not only that you need to use stoichiometry or stoichiometry tables we also saw in chapter 3 to combine them and once we combine these two here we can combine it with our design equation and if there's no change in moles and no pressure drop we can go directly combine the rate law the stoichiometry tables and get this rate uh, let's say with this rate law and we just combine them and we solve it, the equations essentially just solve for the volume and you're done now we're not going to see this part here for the batch because normally we don't have pressure drops essentially because the volume is constant and the gas is actually not dropping or not flu flowing so just ignore this part right here I show it so you can recall it but we are not going to pay attention on this now let's revisit the batch uh, if liquid phase typical change in density may be neglected so the initial volume will be the final volume makes sense you have for example here you react A and turns it to B the volume will be essentially the same and especially if you're talking about liquids now if the gas phase the volume of the vessel is fixed that's good because it's metallic even though the gas pushes or tries to push the reactor, re the reactor will remain the same volume so the first time you fix it because it's a gas it's everywhere and even though you have a change in uh, pressure or a change in temperature or a change in moles the volume will be the same in general of course there are uh, exceptions such as the they always tell me this example the internal combustion engine of course you have a reactor that is changing size everywhere because you have the piston that uh, compresses and then it expands and you have changing volumes of course that is a batch reactor actually every explosion is a batch but we're not going to analyze that type of equations or that type of reactions we're going to analyze normal industrial processes which take this batch reactor and then you fill it with gas and they react and then you take them out now the assumptions we're going to do in these type of reactors are essentially number one it's very well mixed so it's perfectly mixed even though you know that by far that normally in the walls you have bad mixture and maybe here in the in the bottoms you have worse mixture uh, we're going to suppose it's perfectly mixed so don't worry about that uh, the reactants enter at the same time well that of course is the same if you tell me A enters and then reacts to turn out B and then I'm going to pour out more A maybe I'm going to see that B turns or B and A make another reaction well of course because you're 
mixing them in different times. But if we have the same reactions or the, re the same reactants, we're going to have only one reaction. There are no side reactions, so this means this applies only for one reaction, no multiple reactions. The filling time may be neglected, so the time needed to react that reactor is too much or at least uh, enough to ignore this time of filling because this time actually is, uh, let's say, if you are taking a lot of time filling and filling and filling, of course, reactants will start reacting. And maybe when you are finished, they already reacted and you are like, hey, what's up? I was supposed to start the heating just when I finished filling. Well, we're going to suppose that time is zero. Let's say it's automatically. And also it's thermal operation. Hopefully by far you are understanding that chapter four does not include temperature changes. Uh, so hopefully you got the idea that for liquid and gas, liquid and gas, we're going to use constant volumes. Uh, we've had changes, uh, or we, we got our stoichiometry tables in which we got changes in volume, or that you want, you can use them, but in these cases we will be using concentrations. So this is the form we will use for analyzing rate of reaction data in the next chapter. So hopefully you remember this. This is our accumulation term and this is our generation term. I just send this volume here and then I'm going to put this volume inside and by definition moles divided by volume it's concentration and I have uh, my derivative of concentration with respect to time equals my rate of reaction. But normally you know that we love forcing that negative RA which is rate of reaction so I need to put it or write it right here. This one right here is the one we're going to be using a lot in chapter number five. We're going to see that later, don't worry, you don't need to memorize it. So, yeah, essentially it's everything, guys. We're going to do an example for first order, but I think we're going to do it in another video. So, if you haven't like got the idea of the batch, please make a review and see you in the next video. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues, or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.